So today we're going to take a look at choosing the right graph to display your data because definitely some graphs will work better than others in certain situations. So let's see what we can see. The first type of graph is called a pictograph. Now this is something that you might have seen way back in the kindergarten and what it is is it's a graph that displays choices by using pictures. So the happy face might mean one person or two people that might mean one person there um, so it'll look something like this in some cases like in your book there's a picture of favorite types of music and then they're drawing an archaic cd if you know what that is anymore i guess they'd be drawing a digital file now uh, another example in the book is a recycle bin for what's being recycled as i lose focus here sorry focused okay um or somewhat focused okay so here we have a boy drawing recycle bins and one recycle bin stands for four items. Advantage, looks nice, like little pictures of recycle bins. Disadvantage, time consuming, and it's not easy to read quickly. Um, it's kind of hard to compare things to because you have to like move down this way. Uh, so we'll get to how a bar graph might be a little better for that. Next we have bar graph. Bar graph is when you have those rectangle shaped bars like that. Um, and what it is, is it's a graph that lets you display data for multiple items. So what's a favorite type of drink? Uh, maybe lemonade, blueberry juice, or raspberry juice for kids in 6B, and it shows quickly and you can compare the different uh, data entries there. There's an example of one in your book. It says number of red chocolates in a box, and it has a different number of boxes. So look, it lets you compare multiple boxes at once. Isn't that special? Uh, so there's that one there. Okay, uh, the next one is a double bar graph. And that's basically like two bar graphs in one. You'll see how I colored one blue and one carmine red. Um, and what that lets you do is it says, okay, let's take one set of, set of data and compare it to another set of da data. So again, I wrote a bar graph that allows you to compare two choices from multiple items. So over here, we have a double bar graph that compares, I did say compare, I think, compares or compares um, recycling for different items, but then it gives you two choices, week one and week two. That way you can compare and see how um, those people did for that time period. All right, you can say, oh, week one, they're great recycling this, but then not so much that or vice versa kind of thing. Okay, um, sometimes too, you might have a boy's and a girl's choice where you could do a double bar graph and one could represent the boys and one could represent the girls. So that's the advantage of a double bar graph. Just a little bit more going on. Of course, hopefully I should say by now, you know a line graph and that's when you are plotting points and you uh, join those points to create a line because they're, of course, continuous data. Um, examples of that, you've seen before, something like growth and height. This mic just can't focus today for some reason, sorry. Um, so Nathan's height, you see, is joined to line because his growth is continuous. Same thing with my baby sister's mass because, you know, weight is continuous as well, okay? Um, we have lastly a point graph and that's when you have a scatter plot of points and that's when you're displaying discrete data for example population and i give you a sneak preview but here it is again here is a population graph of nunavut and you'll see that the points aren't joined because each year when they did that census they would start counting at zero there you have it those are your graphs so for this assignment, you're gonna to have to decide which graph will be the best to choose. So consider what type of data you're trying to show, maybe how much or the quality, and then make your choice appropriately. Good luck.